G'day guys, Skits here, and welcome to another Elder Scrolls Online video. This is going to be part one of hopefully three or four parts. We'll see how we go with this little series, but uh, this is basically going to be a few videos about everything you need to know about the game up till this point in time. Uh, so basically all the information that's been released about... Uh, I'm going to go over about six different topics, and there's lots of um, things to tell you guys about. You will learn something throughout this video. I mean, um, I was doing a lot of research on all this stuff, and... Like, I've been considering myself a pretty big fan of this game, and after looking at all this stuff, I didn't realize that there was a lot about this game that I didn't know. So, most of this information's come from the alpha of the game, and just other certain parts of it. Uh, a lot of, like, leaked developer uh, interviews and things like that, all that sort of stuff. Um, so, um, yeah, there's going to be lots of these parts, hopefully, uh, where I'll just cover heaps of different things and state my opinion. Um, I'm reading off dot points, so I'm going to be reading and then sort of discussing my opinion. A lot of things... Uh, are going to be maybe a little bit controversial for you guys because a lot of things, like there's been some few things that have been released the last few days that I haven't entirely agreed with, but I want to voice my opinion and hopefully you guys will, um, you know, have an opinion as well, which you can leave in the comments. So let's go ahead and get started with the development slash what is The Elder Scrolls Online? Because I'm sure a lot of you guys out there would just want to know what really the game is all about. So obviously it's an upcoming MMO, and that's right, MMO. Uh, this is the first MMO in the series, so this is going to be a little bit of a, I don't know, it might turn out to be a little bit, you know, unexpected for some people. A lot of people were expecting this to be very uh, similar to Skyrim or something, but there are a lot of different features, but in the same way, they've kept a lot of the same aspects. Obviously, it's been developed by ZeniMax Online Studios. They were formed in 2007, so they're pretty new. This is their first actual game. Uh, ZeniMax Media is basically the parent company which owns both the ZeniMax Online Studios and Bethesda. So, they had like a meeting in 2008 where they basically told them what they wanted from The Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. There's been a lot of sort of um, companies like Bethesda that have voiced what they want in the game. And then uh, ZeniMax Online Studios have sort of taken that aboard themselves to try and make it their own game while, while keeping, uh, you know, Bethesda's input into it as well. So, ZeniMax Alliance Studios is comprised of around 250 people um, that are basically industry veterans or Elder Scrolls fans. So, they all know a lot about, you know, how to develop a good game and stuff like that. They're not some completely random company that, you know, don't know what they're doing. Um, so, yeah, let's get into the actual sort of development. So, the Elder Scrolls Alliance features an engine that supports a similar real-time combat model to what, we, to what we've seen in recent uh, TES games like Skyrim. And can basically, it has capabilities to hold up to 200 players on the screen at any one time. So that means this engine is similar to what we've seen before. It's going to play out pretty similarly. Um, but this time we're going to be able to have like heaps of players and mobs on the screen at one time without lag. So that's going to be really awesome. Something that we haven't seen in an MMO before. Uh, instead of realms or shards as some people call them, there's basically one big mega server. Which basically means that the game is played on one big server. Uh, which means that a lot of people would think that this is going to mean there's going to be lots of lag, at, at, you know, right at the start of the game. But basically, this does the opposite. Um, so that's going to be exciting to see how that's going to actually work. Um, so basically, on the mega server, there's not going to be like grouping barriers, no queuing, and stuff like that. So unlike in WoW, where sometimes will take ages to queue into your realm, you can just go straight in. That's the one big positive about a mega server. Um, the mega server generally will place you with like guildmates, friends, and people of the similar sort of gameplay preferences. So say you're a hardcore gamer and you can only, you only like to play PvP, there'll be people that have been grouped up with you on that mega server. So um, they've really tried to make it the grouping of the mega server sort of, uh, I don't know, it, they've tried to make it really appeal to people that like to play with other people, if you know what I mean. So it's a very social game. Um, so they're basically ZeniMax Online Studios are planning on ensuring that any modern laptop can run The Elder Scrolls Online. So basically, you won't need to have anything crazy, you know, no crazy computer or anything like that. Um, just a pretty simple rig, nothing too crazy, because obviously they don't want to restrict this game to like hardcore gamers, so you can play it on pretty much anything uh, modern. So the next thing is probably the most, well for me, one of the most controversial things about this game. This was only released a few hours ago actually. The Elder Scrolls Online will be playable in only third person. Uh, so you can scroll into th first person, but basically what that's going to do is just make it so that you can't see your hands, you can't see anything. So it's nothing like how Skyrim was. It's going to be like how WoW is when you scroll in. So basically there's no point in playing first person. That's just for like scenic people. For me that's a little bit of a disappointment. I did like the whole idea of playing in first person as well, but I might make a separate video about that later on so I can discuss it a bit further on. Um, 
So yeah, the game is designed in third person, so a lot of people might not be happy with that, but uh, let me know what you think about that. Next thing is the in-game UI is basically designed to be as minimalistic as possible in order to sort of preserve that sort of extra bit of focus on the environment rather than the sort of interface elements. So things like hotbars and, you know, crazy things on the screen like, like I'll bring up WoW again because it's basically the best MMO to compare. Uh, unlike, you know, having a, a character sort of portrait and everything, that's not going to be in the game. They're trying to make it as minimalistic as possible. So the next bit of information is pretty exciting for me and this is going to be a bit of a... I don't know, a little bit skeptical to see how this goes, but really excited to see how it goes. So basically, in other MMOs, um, players could pretty easily know how to attack a certain mob. You know, even if they were a different mob, they would know because the mob would basically have under its name, you know, uh, you know, weak towards fire or whatever. Whereas in the Elder Scrolls Online, players will actually have to watch the physical movements of enemies in order to anticipate their attacks, and that's just the quote I read there. But that basically means that it's going to filter out all the crappy players that just sit there knowing exactly how to, you know, kill every single enemy with ease. Now it's a lot more uh, challenging and, and fun to actually attack every single mob. No two mobs are the exact same, and that for me is really exciting. Uh, the next thing is that modding. So, basically there was a lot of modding in Skyrim, and that's because it was a single player game. That was to be expected. But for balancing and security reasons, this basically won't be featured in ESO, at least at the start. Uh, although things like hotbar mods and maybe like some sort of different map mods and things like that may be introduced later on for user customization, but obviously it would be really ridiculous if players could have this upper advantage of them just by adding a mod onto a game. Once again, I could go into detail about that later on in another video, but that's just something that I quickly want to cover now. So the next thing is about loading screens and basically the amount of time everything takes. So there will be loading screens in this game, and that's basically so that if there was no loading screens, the map would look a lot worse, and it would take a while to render things out and all that sort of stuff. That's why there are loading screens, but they're only a couple of seconds at mo like they're only at the most you'd get is like a four-second one. Whereas in Skyrim, I remember waiting for like fifteen seconds just to uh, load into a new uh, like province. But in this game, um, provinces feature sure loading screens. Basically, just when moving from zone to zone. So if you go into like a an inn or something, you probably won't get a loading screen, but you will get loading screens if you move from big areas to other areas, which is to be expected. Still, I mean, it, sure, it's 2013, but loading screens are just normal, and that's part of you know rendering times and all that sort of stuff. So the next bit of information, and this is really important to a lot of you guys out there who don't want to pay for a game monthly, is that the business model is still not confirmed. So for all we know, there will be a monthly subscription. But in my opinion, it's going to be buy to play, and then they'll have maybe a few expansions uh, later down the track. They did, they basically have confirmed that there will be expansions because there are zones at the start of the game that are basically locked, so you can't actually go into them until expansions are released. So that's a little bit exciting for me, the fact that, you know, it does seem like they're going to be bringing expansions instead of a monthly subscription. So the next thing is that The Elder Scrolls Online is currently in closed beta, and it's being tested by hundreds of developers and gamers out there. Um, and they're also accepting people interested in beta testing for them. So, beta test, this is sort of, I don't know, this sort of means that the game's near, but in another way, it means it's f got a fair bit of time to go, because um, obviously they're still trying to test out things, mechanics in the game, and, and they're removing things from the game and adding things in. They're trying to get glitches and bugs out of the game. So, my best guess is that it's going to be released maybe November this year. Um, I wouldn't say any early, just because they haven't released that much gameplay uh, at all. So, I wouldn't count on there being, uh, you know, an early release until maybe November or so. Um, beta testing will feature both open and closed phases. So, um, I guess that's a good thing. I don't know, to be honest. Uh, that's just, I guess that means they've got more time to beta test, which is good. Um, so yeah, once again, it is set to be released this year on PC and Mac, and there is no plans to release it on console. For me, I'm sorry for you console guys, I do love console, but thank god. I just don't think MMOs could run well on the current era of consoles. They're outdated, and MMOs really require a lot of graphical capabilities to actually look good and play out well. So, that's it for this video, guys. This is going to be part one of a fair few parts, hopefully. So, I basically just discovered... Uh, discovered. I uh, basically just covered development and basically what the game is actually all about. Next part will get more in-depth and all that sort of stuff, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Check out the Elder Scrolls Online playlist I've got in the description, and I will see you guys later.